Hello everyone, I welcome you all to my channel. In this video, we are going to see design methodologies and design process in embedded and real-time systems. Our learning objectives are why design methodologies, design flows, the types of models that we are going to see, waterfall model, spiral model, successive refinement model and concurrent engineering. Why design methodologies? What is the need for design methodology? Design methodology means nothing but design method used to designing an embedded system. When many people work together on a project, they need to agree on who will do the things and how will it done. So we need a design process. Then only everyone in the team can understand what they are going to do and what they will get as the output. The goals of design process. There are three important goals. The one is time to market, second one is design cost and third one is quality. Time to market. Customers always want new features. The product that comes out first can win the market. So we should know at which time we should market our product. For example, sale of school bags. The sale of school bags will be very high during the month of May and June. The second one is design cost. Many consumer products are very cost sensitive. So design cost and manufacturing cost is very very essential because this only decides the cost of our product. As the time to market pressure increases, automatically the design cost also increases because the team size increases, they have to complete their project within the limited period of time. So more salaries are given to the team members. So automatically the cost gets increased. Quality. Customers not only want their products fast and cheap, they also want them to be right. For example, China products normally, uh, have you heard about G5 mobiles? When it comes into the market, it, it reaches each and every person. But as the quality is poor, now it is not in the market. The next one is design flow. Design flow is a sequence of steps to be followed during a design. Some of the steps can be performed by computer tools and the other steps can be performed by hand. There are four different models. One is waterfall model, second one is spiral model, third one is successive refinement model and fourth one is concurrent engineering. First let us see what is waterfall model. It was introduced by Royce, first model proposed for software development process. There are five major phases. The first one is requirements, second one is architecture, third one is coding, fourth one is testing and the fifth one is maintenance. Requirements. Analysis determines the basic characteristics of the system. Then comes architecture. Design composes of, uh, the functionality into major components. Then comes coding. So coding implements the pieces and integrates them. That, that means it will combine everything. Then the fourth step is testing. So testing is used for uncovering the bugs. That means errors maintenance bug fixes and for upgrades we go for maintenance this is the waterfall model of software development so the first one is requirement the second architecture coding testing and maintenance the second one is spiral model the waterfall model assumes that the system is built once in its entirety the spiral model assumes that the several versions of the system will be built so at each level of the design, the designers go through the requirements, construction and testing phases. At later stages, when more complete versions of the system are constructed, each phase requires more work widening the design spiral. The spiral model is more realistic than the waterfall model. This is the spiral model of software design. So first system feasibility, then specification, then you will be getting a prototype then initial system, then finally you will be getting the enhanced system. The next one is successive refinement. So from the name itself you can understand. Successive refinement. In this approach the system is built several times. A first system is used as a rough prototype and the successive models of the system are further refined. Refining the system by building several increasingly complex systems allow you to test out architecture and design techniques. So the successive refinement development model. This is the successive refinement development model. This is our initial system. Then refined system. Like that it goes on. 
So first specification, architecture, design, build, test. This is our initial system. Then after that, if you want to modify anything, that should be modified in the refined system. Then again, it goes on like that. The next one is simple hardware or software design methodology. Requirements and specification first you will be getting, then architecture. From that architecture, you will be designing hardware and software. Then finally, you will have to combine this hardware and software that is called as integration. And finally, system test that is testing for errors. The next one is concurrent engineering. So, to reduce the design time, we go for this concurrent engineering model. This is the important goal for a concurrent engineering, reducing the design time. It tries to eliminate the overall the wall design steps in which one designer performs an isolated task and then throws the result over the wall to the next designer with little interaction between the two. So, in concurrent engineering, this wall is eliminated and there is a great interaction between the two designers. This is the overall process. So, first, the most this is the most abstract. So, requirements and specification, then architecture, you'll be having a hardware design, software design, in integration, system test. So, for hardware design, separately you will be having a specification, hardware architecture, detailed design, integration and test. Like that it goes on. For software design also, you will be having specification, software architecture, model design, integration and test. Concurrent engineering efforts are comprised of several elements. Cross-functional teams, concurrent product realization, incremental information sharing, integrated project management, early and continual supplier involvement, early and continual customer focus. So, these are the things that are carried out in concurrent engineering. So, cross-functional teams means it should include the members from various disciplines. Then, concurrent product realization process activities are at the heart of concurrent engineering, doing several things at once. Then, incremental information sharing helps minimize the chance that concurrent product realization will lead to surprises. As soon as new information becomes available, it is shared and integrated into the design. Then integrated project management ensures that someone is responsible for the entire project and that responsibility is not abdicated once one aspect of the work is done. Then early and continual supplier involvement helps make the best use of suppliers' capabilities. Early and continual customer focus helps ensure that the product best meets customers' needs. Now, we have come to the end of the session. If you like this video, kindly subscribe it and share it with your friends. Thank you.